nscaler454 here and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be building the Walders nscale sanding towers and drying house. So opening it up, we'll see what the contents are like. as I drop everything down. As expected, the brick is the same color as every other Walders kit there is. Um, I, I'm gonna use the same technique as I did on the, uh, whatever it was, it, the building I did earlier. I can't remember the name of it actually now. Uh, whereas I apply some paint on it and just wipe it off. Before I use the aged white concrete, I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go a little darker this time, just to change it up a little bit. Looks like we have some concrete pads and this would be the roof, so that's gotta be black. Hmm. I think what I'll do is I'll cut these out and I'll paint these separately and I'll airbrush the concrete for all of this. And then there's a whole bunch of you know, pipes and cylinders and ladders and whatnot, so I think I'll do some sort of gray metal paint for that. That's the hardest part, is figuring out what kind of paint to use and what colors. So, and then of course this right here, which is a wood color, I believe. So, again, in a, a previous model I did, I used a kind of a tan and then put some, uh, what is this, some, some model wash on it, and it looked pretty good, but I want to change that up a little bit to make it more of an, an aged wood. So, uh, yeah, i got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. So, that's the, the plastics. So now I will go ahead and start cutting them out. So the cutters I'm using are Klein Tools flush cutters. I'll put a link in the description. They actually work really well. Sometimes I like to take a little sanding paper and just make sure there's no burrs on the edges. But there really isn't much cleanup to do since the Kleins do such a good job of getting it nice and close. So I gave one panel a uh, painting there. It's actually quite difficult to do because the grooves for the, the mortar is very shallow and it, it wants to lift when you wipe it off. I'm using Concrete Flat by Model Master. Um, it's okay, but for such a small structure, I think I will run with it, and uh, maybe I can weather it and give some highlights later on. So, give it a nice liberal coating of paint, and if I can, I'm gonna try to be quick with this too. There's like a sweet spot of on how much it's dry where it wants to lift without lifting too much. What you can do is once this is relatively dry is you take a sharp edge and you can scrape over it and it will pick up that top layer of paint. And you can see the difference. Right, so I don't know about you, but I think this looks better. So I went ahead and painted the concrete bases, which I used Auto Masters Age Concrete Flat. I used my airbrush, and I should have read the instructions because I found on this sprue, there's two pieces that needed to be painted concrete as well, so I'm gonna have to go back and do that. Um, I think for the sanding towers, which is the majority of the structure here, is I'm gonna put it all together as much as I can together and then paint it all at once. And the rest I'll have painted on the sprue and then add it to uh, the tower later. For the colors that I'm gonna use for the metals, I think I'm gonna go with the Tamiya's Dark Iron and I'll see if that looks any good. So I'll start putting this together and we'll see how it looks. For some additional detail, I'm going to paint the heads of the bolts on these little bars right here. Uh, I've already sprayed this with that dark iron, and then I'm going to use this, whatever, Proto Paint Rust, which I darkened a little bit with some German Grey. 
and uh, just so it's not so bold. And then I'm going to apply it with a toothpick. So I did finish the assembly and painting of the sanding towers. I used an airbrush and I put on dark iron paint, which it looks okay, but it came out a little more brown and darker than I expected, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, it definitely lightens up once you start putting on your weathering powders. Now this one right here, in the instructions there's this, um, it tells you to use like really thin wire to put like your uh, balancing weights on. And so I took some wire that you probably can't even see it, it's so thin. I can't figure out how to get that on, it just doesn't work. So I'm still working on that, I don't know if I'll even put those on. Uh, those that are building this kit will know exactly what I'm talking about and if you have any tips on how to put that on, uh, these balancing weights, let everybody know because it was a pain in the butt and obviously I haven't done it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the weathering powders on this one and what I use is primarily um, old rust, this is a Vallejo weathering powder and I'll also use the, just the oxide which is just the rust, the light rust. So, and a good tip that I found, at least for me, is if you have a wet toothpick, uh, it will kind of glob it on a little heavier, and uh, it, it typically looks pretty good. This is where it really lightens up, is when that powder gets into the, the porousness of the paint, which isn't much, but it's enough that it will, you'll, you'll see a bit of an orange tinge to it, and that drastically lightens up the the uh, the paint of that black. <clears throat> For the windows and doors of the main structure, I'm going to paint it this tan color here. It's called Buff by Tamiya. Uh, and then I'm gonna use the airbrush and then spray on this what color sky gray and hope to give it a little bit of depth. I'm gonna use the airbrush for that to try to keep it kind of thin. And then the plan is to go over it with the Vallejo black wash. That's it. So I had a bit of an issue with the packaging. Uh, this part right here was not included on the sprue. It is part number 68, and uh, I guess it's a relatively common issue, so if you're building this kit, make sure to check to see if this piece is included in your kit. Otherwise, call uh, Walders up and they will send you the, the piece at no charge, which is nice. Unfortunately, being in Canada, it, take, uh, it takes about a month for me to get this, so I have been delayed. In any case, I got it, so I've been able to paint up the boards with a, a wooden color. Um, I actually used three different colors. So I used this right here. It's This is Buff. This is Sky Gray. And this is just brown. All right. So, I used those colors, and then I want to mention that I bought these little micro spoons. They're stainless steel. They were really handy because I was using toothpicks and brushes and to do my mixing, so I just had this little tray or whatever, and I was wasting a lot of paint, so I could just scoop this out now and then mix it any way I wanted, which was important for this because I wanted some variety in the boards. I didn't want them to be all one single color, and I think I was able to achieve that look, so they don't all look the same. Um, these ones are essentially complete. Uh, with this one, I still have to apply the Vallejo black wash to it just to give it some depth and some, you know, put some black in these crevices and the cracks. And these ones, I've already done the rivets with the rust because they're like riveted bolts. And I use the Proto Paint Old Rust, like so. So I will go ahead and finish this one up. We can now assemble the kit, starting with the sandbox. I quickly discovered that the end piece with the door did not have the wooden texture on both sides as shown in the instructions. I'm not sure if this is a manufacturing defect, but I just painted it with some brown to match the rest of the wooden boards. Also because of the shape of this piece, it doesn't quite fit properly on the base, 
so we have to cut away some of the ridge to make it fit correctly. I could then go ahead and glue all the sides onto the base. Followed by the steel frame pieces. From here I was able to assemble the sanding house. I first cut out the windows with a sharp utility knife and then glued them into place. Then I glued all the windows and doors in place before gluing the walls to the base structure. I could then install the roof, but be sure to paint the underside of the roof edges as those could be visible from certain angles. After that is complete, we can fiddle with putting the chimney and roof vent together, which completes the structure. I thought the Walders kit would come with a plastic sand pile that you could paint, but it does not. You have to make it yourself. I chose to use some styrofoam that I had laying around as it was already a nice square shape. I used a sharp utility knife to form the shape of the sand pile and then check the fitment. I then mixed up some plaster using plaster of Paris dry mix and put a skim coat over the styrofoam and proceeded to airbrush it with Model Master's H white flat. I then glued it to the base using Elmer's glue all. I originally was going to use Woodland Scenic's fine grey gravel as the sand, but I honestly didn't like the colour. I strained up some sand that I dug up, but I still didn't like the colour. So I found some white sand from Michael's, but it was a little too coarse for end scale, so I spread it on a cookie sheet and crushed it with a spoon. I then mixed in some Vallejo Desert Dust Weathering Powder to give it some colour. I then used a wet brush to spread the Elmer's glue all over the foam piece and then sprinkled a layer of sand over that. I sprayed a mist of rubbing alcohol and used a pipit to drip a 3 to 1 water to glue mixture over the sand surface. And then you can add the cross bracing to finish it all off. Well that pretty much wraps up this project. I know you guys are wondering what about the rest of the tower and all the piping that goes with it. Uh, the truth is, there's not much I can do with it right now because you pretty much need to have the layout set and your tracks laid to kind of know exactly how to you know lay it in place. And I'm not there yet, so I'm going to have to wait on that part. But, um, you know, it, it will come down the road. This piece right here, this tower, I'm not even sure I'm going to be using it because it has this like the downspout filler here. I don't know if you can see that okay. But I don't understand how that would work on a diesel layout. So maybe it works on a steam locomotive layout, but if anybody can tell me how this exactly works uh, and why it's necessary versus just having one, I don't know, but I, I may just have one tower instead of both of them. So if you guys know the function of this tower, please leave a comment in the comment section and let everybody know. Other than that, I think the structure turned out okay. I'm happy with the color of the sand. I may have taken it or preferred it a little bit lighter, but I think it looks okay. And um, yeah, I'm excited to move on to the next one. 
So if you guys like the video, of course hit your like button, subscribe, and if you want to support the channel, please check out the description. There's a PayPal for if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, or also maybe check out my Patreon uh, page because there will be content on there that is not posted anywhere else. And as always, thanks for watching.